It is so good to have you along on today's Doug Wright Show. Okay, I've got to get right to it. I've got to get right to it. This is what last evening was like at the Wright household. We had just gone to see the movie premiere of Jack Reacher, which we will review tomorrow on the movie show. And we had DVR'd the presidential debate. So as we were driving home, I thought to myself, okay, we're going to get home about near around 930, and then I'll watch. And so about 11 o'clock, I'll be here. And so I was in pretty good mood, and I thought, okay, this is going to work out fine. And so I kind of ensconced myself on the couch, and I was just kind of going along. And at first I went, now, wait a minute. Donald Trump seems to be a little toned down here. They, they're actually talking about some issues. Oh, they're, they're talking about abortion. And they're talking about Syria and the refugees. They're, wow, well, they're, they're, they're talking about gun issues and Second Amendment rights. And so I'm just kind of serenely there with Dagmar on the couch with me and the little fat boy sitting by the side and D is over needle pointing and it's just idyllic. And then, oh, holy Camoles, I heard this. I will look at it at the time. I'm not looking at anything now. I'll look at it at the time. What I've seen, what I've seen is so bad. First of all, the media is so dishonest and so corrupt, and the pile-on is so amazing. The New York Times actually wrote an article about it that they don't even care. It's so dishonest, and they've poisoned the minds of the voters. But unfortunately for them, I think the voters are seeing through it. I think they're going to see through it. We'll find out on November 8th, but I think they're going to see through it. But, sir, there's a... If you look, excuse me, Chris, if you look at your voter rolls, you will see millions of people that are registered to vote. Millions. This isn't coming from me. This is coming from Pew Report and other places. Millions of people that are registered to vote that shouldn't be registered to vote. So... Let me just give you one other thing. So I talk about the corrupt media. I talk about the millions of people. I'll tell you one other thing. She shouldn't be allowed to run. It's cro- it, she's, she's guilty of a very, very serious crime. She should not be allowed to run. And just in that respect, I say it's rigged. Because she but, should but, never, Chris, she should never have been allowed to run for the presidency based on what she did with emails and so many other but, things. But, sir, there is a tradition in this country, in fact, one of the prides of this country, is the peaceful transition of power and that no matter how hard fought a campaign is, that at the end of the campaign, that the loser concedes to the winner, not saying that you're necessarily going to be the loser or the winner, but that the loser concedes to the winner and that the country comes together in part for the good of the country. Are you saying you're not prepared now to commit to that principle? What I'm saying is that I will tell you at the time. I'll keep you in suspense. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I, 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 I was sitting there and... All kinds of thoughts went through my mind. I got a bad feeling about this. Unbelievable. And boy, I'll tell you, you don't have to go to any Democrats at all to get shocking response to this. I I love the way this article opened. Democratic and Republican insiders blanched at Donald Trump's refusal to say in Wednesday night's debate that he would accept the presidential election outcome if he were to lose. Sharp criticism from members of both parties have absolutely poured in. Lindsey Graham, GOP Senator, South Carolina, said the Republican nominee was doing the party and a country a great disservice by continuing to suggest the outcome of this election is out of his hands and rigged against him. If he loses, it will not because be because the system is rigged, but because he has failed as a candidate. Conservative commentator Laura Ingram said, she's a Trump supporter, he should have said that he would accept the results of the election. Steve Schmidt, a GOP strategist, said this was a disqualifying moment and represented a clear and present danger to our constitutional order. Carlos Cubello, who is a GOP congressman from Florida, wrote on Twitter, The acceptance of election results is fundamental to our democracy and constitution. This cannot be undermined ever. 
It was Brett Stevens who uh, was with the Wall Street Journal who said Trump's answer on accepting the outcome of the vote is the most disgraceful statement by a presidential candidate in 100 and 60 years. I'd like to go back and see which point he started the clock. What was said 160 years ago that makes this the worst since then? I've got to do some research on that. I just about fell off the couch. My wife stood up and said, I am done. I'm going to bed. She was so thoroughly disgusted. But here's something that we did. You know, when, when, we, when we heard this, we thought... Are you saying you're not prepared now to get to that principle? What I'm saying is that I will tell you at the time. I'll keep you in suspense. Okay, so right then and there, we thought, okay, we need to get reaction. So, now in some cases, you know the magic of this radio program. We not only can get the reaction, we can sometimes go within the heads of the individuals who are thinking. And we heard this collectively. It was so strong from the Trump family, when the patriarch of the family said that statement, this is what we collectively heard from the vibes that came from the Trump family collectively. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. And then Chris Wallace, who was trying to straighten this out, this was going through his head. Fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be a bumpy night. Yeah. Okay, Reince Priebus just started spinning when those words fell out of Donald Trump's mouth. No, 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 this is bad, this is very, very bad, this is really bad. Yeah, and then somebody who was a reluctant supporter, we didn't catch the name, but this idea just emanated from his head. This is the best bad idea we have, sir. Yeah, and then poor Mike Pence. Boy, what Mike Pence was feeling and thinking as the head of the 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 Tigot said this. I mean, Mike Pence has had to just about tap dance, bend over backwards, go into contortions in order to somehow justify even being on the ticket, much less somehow be able to convince himself and others that they ought to remain with Donald Trump. But this was going on in Mike Pence's head. Yeah, Governor Pence, we got this one. Well... There's another nice mess you've gotten me into. Yeah, okay. And then, you know, of course, Kellyanne is the uh, head of the campaign, and this is a staffer who was just distraught and calling her. Houston, we have a problem. Yeah, and then there's this one, Tim Kaine. Tim Kaine was just sitting back going, oh, what a gift. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You ain't heard nothing yet. Yeah, wait until, who knows what we'll hear in the next couple of weeks, and then Hillary Clinton. If there could have been one of those little bubble cartoons, as Donald Trump was saying this. Are you saying you're not prepared now to commit to that principle? What I'm saying is that I will tell you at the time. I'll keep you in suspense. Okay, this is what Hillary Clinton was thinking, and she did it in George M. Cohan's voice. My mother thanks you. My father thanks you. My sister thanks you. And I assure you, I thank you. And, uh, I wouldn't worry about this country if I were you. We've got this thing licked. Yeah. My mother thanks you. My father thanks you. My Oh, my. And then Chris Christie. Poor Chris Christie. You know, from everything from that awkward thing when, when he's first endorsing, where everybody, he's just standing there like a lump, looking like he is absolutely in shock. He is not even blinking. It's like, I can't believe I ate the whole thing. Well... Chris Christie last night, this is what he was thinking about the overall campaign. What we've got here is failure to communicate. Yeah. <laughs> and our very own Evan McMullen. Evan McMullen, boy, he was watching this and he just went, oh man. Hasta la vista, baby. And then. You know, I mentioned the head of the Trump campaign, Kellyanne. This is what she was thinking. You're killing me, Smalls. Yeah, you're killing me, Smalls. Are you kidding me? Donald, 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 get a filter. You're killing me, Smalls. And then this is what America was collectively thinking when the Donald said this. Are you saying you're not prepared now to commit to that principle? What I'm saying is that I will tell you at the time. I'll keep you in suspense. Yeah, America had this collective thought. That boy ain't right. What was that again? That boy ain't right. Okay, let's take a brief break, and we're going to come back. I want you to chime in. 
Holy cow, what an embarrassing moment for Mr. Trump. And pretty much, now there are some amazing spin doctors out there who after they collectively pick their jaws up off the floor. What was it Reince Priebus said again? No, 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 this is bad. This is very, very bad. This is really bad. Yeah, after they all stopped just from being stunned, they thought, how do we spin this? How do we spin this? What do we do? What do we do? <laughs> well, what they did, they said, well, let's see. When is there? Uh, uh, it's like Al Gore. No, it's not like Al Gore. Well, it's, uh, uh, it, it, it is insanity. This political process, the candidates and we collectively as the American people, if we don't do something radically to fix this, we have lost our minds. Unbelievable last night.